praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning. Amen. Nice and hot and warm. You know the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. Amen. And he's ready to warm our hearts and our souls as we look to him. So let's stand and begin to give him the glory and Hallelujah. worship him. Amen. And invite him into our presence. Hallelujah. Lord, we Father, just thank, thank you for this day. Oh, we just thank you that we can come and worship you. Lift up your name this morning, Lord. Just have your way. Thank you for your love. Oh, Lord, your will be able to do this soul this morning. As we look to you and we call upon your name, it is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be called upon, Lord. We just put our trust in you this morning. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Oh, for each and every soul, just move in a special way. For each and every need. Lord, this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, worthy are you to be praised, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, let's give him a clap, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, 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 praise the Lord, we're going to sing as unto the Lord, so let's Let's get our voices ready. Make a joyful noise as unto the Lord. It's past party. It's one. It's 2:50. I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, I am on my way to heaven, where the saints are roped and white, shouting glory, shouting glory. A blessed land, immortal, where can never come.
providing a liberty and deliverance from the power and the effects of sin today, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Just take a minute and thank God for his goodness. Thank God for this first Sunday in July. Thank God for his love and mercy. The opportunity to be in his house today. Just give him the glory and the honor. We love you. God, we worship you today. Thank God for this first Sunday 
in July. Amen. Amen. A nice Amen. warm Sunday and a nice awesome God we serve. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have no sad stories to tell this morning. Amen. But as we draw near to the Lord, the Lord is here to draw near to us, to meet us at our point of need. And it's just good to come and give God the honor that he deserves today. Thank God for the liberty and the freedom that we have today to be in the house of God in the house of worship. Amen. Amen. Be able to come and just look to God and just express our thanksgiving to him for keeping us alive one more week. Amen. One more month. Amen. One more day. He deserves the glory today. Amen. Amen. He deserves the glory. We're yes. here to do that and just magnify the Lord. Just let God do something today in your heart and in your soul. And we do welcome all of you this morning. Just open your heart and allow God to touch you and bless you real good today. Amen. Amen. Welcome everyone that is here today. It's good to see you. Welcome everyone online and watching on, on the Facebook. And we thank God for you. We're glad you tuned in today. We welcome you. Open your heart to the Lord. And let his word touch you today. Let the worship touch you today. And right where you are. If you gathered with, with two or more in the name of Jesus, the Lord said he'll be right there with you. Amen. 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 Be right there with you. So uh, wherever you are today, take time to just stop today and be still and know that he is God. And open your heart. And let's just worship the Lord today. On this Independence Day weekend. Amen? Amen. I'm here thankful for independence. For yes. freedom. For liberty. Amen? Yes. The freedom to be able to come here and worship God. The freedom in the land. Amen. The land of the brave. Land of the free. Because of the brave. Amen. 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 And happy Amen. birthday, America. Uh, we're celebrating. And no doubt everyone has, has seen and heard. And all the celebrations going on. I tell you what. I never heard so many fireworks in my life. Since last night. Right there. Uh -huh in my street and all around me every other neighbor was blowing up something and uh, that's all right better them than me okay? let them blow up their money and i'll watch i'll watch and and sit back and and uh celebrate my freedom and my independence and know that i don't have to go spend that money amen amen let someone else do it but understand why because there's no celebrations going on they've been canceled and things and so Hey, you can't stop people from celebrating. That's right. Hey, Amen. You can't stop that, that American spirit, that freedom, that spirit of freedom that, yeah. that just wants to celebrate yeah. and appreciate what we have in this country. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And there's, there's a song uh, that was on my heart. God bless America. God bless America. And really it's a prayer song. Uh, more than a patriotic song, it's a really a prayer song. Because in that song we're saying, God bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, right? And it's a precious song that expresses the desire of the Christian heart for God to look down upon the country and to bless this nation. Amen? That's right. How many agree we need God's blessing in this yeah. nation today? Amen. Yes. Yes. Today, we need God's blessing in our yes. land. We need God's blessing. And we need God to look down upon this land and guide us uh, through the night, through the darkness, with his light from above. Amen. Amen. And his light from above is sufficient and able to illuminate the pathway before us this morning. Amen. And so we're looking to God and trusting that God would, would intervene and God would move. And we're celebrating and we thank God for the liberty we have today. Amen. And amen. And so we normally would be receiving an offering, but you know the deal so far, I think. We have a container in the back there for all the tithe and offering. We're, we're not touching the bags right now. Uh, we, we will uh, in the future, in the near future, prayerfully. Uh, but we, we do invite you to give as unto the Lord. Pay your tithe and pay your offering as unto God to help meet the needs of God's work here. Amen. And God bless you for your giving is our prayer. For those giving online, you can go to www.myntcc.org slash Columbus OH dash giving. And there's a portal there and instructions to easily and safely give an offering or your tithe online. And it is a blessing to the work of God. We cannot operate without the faithful support of God's people. Amen. The government is not giving the church a stimulus uh, to cover our offerings. Amen. Right. The government is not doing that. He's doing it for some businesses, but not this business. But we know God is faithful. God's making up for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's making up for it. So let's pray for the gift and the giver uh, before we go on to our special song today. And let's just 
Thank God for his faithfulness this morning. Reverend, will you stand and pray and ask God's blessing today? Thank you. Father, we're just thankful once again for your blessings, for this opportunity to give to your house and to your work. There you go to meet each and every need. Bless each and every giver. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.
name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise you. God has been faithful to you. God has kept you. Oh, yes, if he's been your help and strength in the time of need, give him praise this morning. sustain and you keep Lord everything that we commit unto you God thank you today Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah we give you praise Jesus we give you praise amen amen thank you Jesus I never lost my praise I may have lost some things You lost some things? I got one honest brother. Anyone else lose some things? You lost some things? All right. But you never lost Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We may lose some things along the way. Hallelujah. But thank God there's some things the devil cannot steal this morning. Amen. Amen. There's some things the devil cannot take. Hallelujah. Yes. We give God the glory. It's good to be in the house of God. We thank, thankful for this opportunity today. Good to see everyone here in the house of the Lord. Pray for those not among us. Maybe they're online today. I don't know where everybody is. But pray for one another. Amen? Pray for one another. We need to be in church more now than ever. Yes. That's one sad thing I can say about COVID-19, that uh, it's, it's tricked a lot of people and scared a lot of people. Yes. <clears throat> I want to go to the Word of God today in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. And I want to begin reading here together in verse 5. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 5. Speaking of 1 Samuel. Verse Samuel 18, verse 5. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands? And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? <laughs> Verse 9 says, And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Looking at Verse 6. And picking up here on the celebration that was taking place, all these women and people came out with tambourines and they were dancing and having fun with joy, the Bible says, and instruments of music. And the very first part of verse 8 said, And Saul was very wroth. Saul was very wroth. He was mad. He got upset. He got, he got mad. And I want to read for a text today in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen? Amen. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And I want to preach with the help of the Lord this morning from these verses on a message entitled, 
joy stealers, joy stealers. Let us pray and ask God's blessing at this time. Reverend, will you please? Father, we're thankful that we can find strength and joy that we have in worshiping and following you, Lord. We just ask once again for your presence, your blessing upon this service, Jesus. upon your message and your messenger. And let, let it go forth in each and every need. Challenge each and every heart dedicated to you to serve you each and every day of their life. And for everything that is accomplished this morning, we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to preach with the help of the Lord on this message, Joy Stealers. Joy Stealers. Using from our text and Bible setting from 1 Samuel here and, and then also in Nehemiah, a very familiar portion of Scripture where the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need strength and we need joy. And it's important to understand how these go hand in hand this morning. But I want to give quickly five tips for a woman. Five tips of advice for a woman. It's important that you find a man that helps you around the house. That's number one. Number two, it is important that you have a man that makes you laugh. Number three, it's, it is important that you find a man you can count on and doesn't lie to you. I look quiet this morning. <laughs> Number four, it is important that a man loves you and spoils you. And the fifth one is, it is important that these four men don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. You know that, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Women, one man is enough, right? Yeah. Men, one woman is enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> enough to handle. Hallelujah. From John chapter 10 and verse 10, there's a Bible verse that we all know. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Then Jesus said in reply, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. The thief only comes for one purpose this morning. To steal or to kill or to destroy. Thieves do not have your good will in mind. They don't have anything good to bring. When a thief shows up, he wants to accomplish one of three things. He's going to steal something, he's going to kill something, or he's going to destroy something. If he can't take it, at least he might destroy it. Because that's what thieves do. And Jesus gives a contrast here and really gives us hope in light of the fact that there is a thief this morning. He gives us the contrast and the promise that he has come that we might have life. Amen. And that we might have that life more abundantly. When thieves show up, they have something uh, bad in mind. Recently, I had a, a neighbor came and tell me that uh, someone was snooping around our houses in the middle of the night and they had a camera footage and they, they, they saw that I had a camera and they wanted to know if I saw anything uh, and I said no, I wasn't aware of that yet let me go and look and I went back and I looked at my, my video from my camera and I sure enough at 1.30 a.m. not long ago some guy was walking right across the front yard and walked right by our cars and he was checking car doors to see if they were left unlocked to see if he can steal something. Well, thank God I locked my doors by the grace of God. And you can see that he went on to, from our house to the next house and as far as the camera would, would, uh, uh, would, would, would record him. But that man on camera, he wasn't coming around my house at 1.30 in the morning to, uh, to bow his knees and pray for me. That's right. He wasn't coming to lay hands on our house and say, Oh, God bless this house. It's so nice. <laughs> he wasn't coming to pull weeds in my garden. He wasn't coming to wash the car or to clean up my yard. He wasn't coming for anything good. And I think that's the impression that Jesus wants us to understand about the thief, our enemy, the devil. He only wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. If he does make a promise or does make something look good, 
beware because with whatever false promise he's given you, the end result is going to be something stolen, something destroyed, or something killed. Because even the devil, the Bible says, comes as an angel of light. He may appear as though he's coming to help and do something good, but his ultimate purpose and intention is to take away something, to kill something, to destroy something. The thief wants to steal this morning. Most thieves are after things, material things, things valuable, money, change, rims, electronics, whatever they can get a hold of. I told you a story a long time ago where I came out in Washington State when I was still in Bible school, woke up and went out to my car. My car was up on blocks and all my rims and tires were stolen from off my car. <laughs> a thief came by in the middle of the night and he stole the rims. Well, thank God for insurance. I got brand new ones with lock nuts this time. <laughs> Most thieves are after something. The reason is simple. They want something that you have. Mm -hmm. And they want to use it for their own purpose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's maybe to support a drug habit. And there's various reasons. Maybe sometimes they don't have a job. Maybe they're jealous. Maybe they're greedy. Maybe they're just too plain lazy to go and get stuff on their own. And they yeah. take it from somebody else. But the reasons are varied. But the purpose is the same. They Amen. want it. And the thief Jesus spoke of here has a greater agenda, agenda here in John chapter 10. Yes. The devil here and the thief that Jesus was referring to, let me tell you, he doesn't want your money this morning. Although he will use it as a distraction to you and to try to destroy you by it. He doesn't want your electronics, your televisions, your gaming consoles, or whatever values you have in your house today. Although he may use that, again, to try to distract you, to occupy your time, and to, to take you away from the things that really matter in life. Amen. He doesn't even want your job this morning. Mm -hmm. But he will settle, he will settle with you and with people giving all their time and energy to it while sacrificing their family, their church worship, and their spirituality. Again, know the purpose. He wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. He doesn't necessarily want the things that we have, but he will use the things as an opportunity to take them away. One of the most powerful things we see in the scripture is the joy and the strength of God's people. Almost 200 times in the scripture, God tells his people to be strong. Many other times he encourages us to be not afraid. We find the scriptures over and over again reminding his people to take courage, to have hope. Amen. We ever notice that in the scripture time and time again, especially with the Israelites in the Old Testament. God's always telling them, don't worry, don't be afraid, be encouraged, be strong. Why? Because God knew that if they allowed themselves to become discouraged and if they lost their joy and sense of hope and who God was and, and life altogether, that it would take away the strength that they would have to be what God wanted them to be. God wanted them to have joy. He wanted them to have courage. He wanted them to be happy. As the psalmist said, Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy is that people. And we see this powerful emotion in the scripture over and over again. That joy, the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah said, is our strength. When we have joy, when we have that as is defined today, a delight of the mind. Joy is defined as a delight of the mind. From the consideration of the present or assured approaching possession of a good. It's also referred to in a short definition as happiness, as hope, jubilation. But I like the definition that says joy is something that doesn't just come from present circumstances, but from the understanding and hope that something is going to come and you have an assurance that things are going to happen in your life. And joy today isn't just happiness because happiness is what? Based on happenstance on the happenings that come around us. Happiness is here today 
and fleeting. It's gone tomorrow. You'll be happy when the sun's shining, but when the rain falls, uh, you're not happy. You'll be happy when you feel good, but when your body's sick, uh, you're not happy. Our circumstances change and happiness changes with it, but there's something more powerful than that in the scriptures that God wants to give his people, and that is joy. And that is the expectation and the hope that something is approaching and you have assurance that there's something good in your life and someone good you can look to no matter what's going on. Yes. Sun, amen, or no sun, rain or shine, good or bad, you have a reason to have a joy because your hope isn't in the circumstances, your hope is in God. Amen. 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 Reverend Aristizabal preached a Thursday night about where is your God at a time in David's life where he began to pray as he looked around at all the things around him and he said the words uh, uh, why is your countenance fallen why art thou or why are you depressed or why are you cast down he said soul why are you down he said hope thou in God and then yes. he made a statement I will yet praise him again who is the health or the hope of my count or my countenance? What was David saying? I've got joy. I've got hope. I've got an expectation that no matter what's going on around me, cannot take away of the faith and the hope that I have within me. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Amen. 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 And so the thief understands that too. He knows the power of joy, the power of hope, the power of our faith, the power of our encouragement. And the devil wants to steal our joy today. Yes. I'm preaching about joy stealers. <laughs> joy stealers. How powerful is joy? Let's look at what the Bible says. It's proven that when somebody is joyful or happy or positive even, they feel better. They look better. <laughs> Amen? Happy people look better this morning. Amen and amen. amen. You agree or don't agree, you know it's true. Yes, it is. Happy people look better. Amen. Happy people are more fine. Amen? Happy people are more attractive, right? Yes. Uh, someone said, uh, get, uh, when you smile, it, add, it adds face value. <laughs> it adds face value. Give yourself a facelift. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In times like these, we need the joy of the Lord more now than ever. Amen. Yes. And there's a joy stealer trying to take away that joy and trying to take away that hope that we have in our lives. A joy makes you feel better. Joy makes people around you better. Why? Because there's something about the spirit of joy and happiness that just does something for you. Not just for the flesh, but something down in your heart. It encourages you when you're around somebody that's happy and positive and victorious and has something good to say. Mark my words, when someone is around you and all they have is something negative to say and all they want to do is complain and trash talk people and spread rumors and gossip, it doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel bad on the inside. It makes you feel dirty on the inside when you listen to that. It makes you feel uncomfortable. And that's just the natural, supernatural response because the Holy God inside of us and the Spirit of the living God inside of us doesn't want to hear all that nonsense and doesn't want to be associated with all that. Why? Because our God is good today. What does the Bible say about the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, the Bible says. Yes. Love and joy. When the Spirit of God is moving in our lives, He will help us to produce this fruit, as He says, or a byproduct called joy. Yes. Joy. The Bible says it this way in Proverbs 15, 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Amen? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Listen to this one. Proverbs 15, 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Hallelujah. The days of the afflicted, they're evil. But he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast. 
When you have a merry heart, you've got something that you can feast on continually. Are you with me this morning? Yes. When you've got joy, when you've got hope, when you've got faith, when your heart is in the right place and your eyes are on the one, amen, that will never leave you or forsake you, you've got a continual feast, something that will continually give you nourishment and strength to feed that part of you, that inner man, that inner woman, because it's so important that we keep that part of us strong because that's the joy of the Lord that is our our strength that will keep us strong when the joy stealer tries to come and zap our joy today. When he comes to tempt us, when he tries to take something away from us, when you've been feeding on the Word and feeding on what God has promised, you'll have a continual feast in your life today. Yes. A merry heart. You all know this one. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a what? A medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Yes. How powerful is the Bible this morning? Amen. That a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I don't need someone with a doctorate or a PhD or some medical license to tell me that it's better off. You'll be healthier if you're happier. <laughs> God told us that thousands of years ago. Amen? Yeah. That there's a benefit in, in, in focusing your heart and your thoughts on the true and the living God and the continual feast that we have in Him. And Mary Hart does good like a medicine this morning. But the opposite is true with the broken spirit and those that allow the enemy to steal their joy. It also takes away our strength. It takes away our hope and focus. The enemy knows this this morning. And he wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In Nehemiah that I read to you, the city of Jerusalem was torn down by the enemies of God. And a lot of things were lost. And you read in this passage of scripture in the history of Israel, the Israelites were put in captivity and bondage. The city of Jerusalem, which was the symbol of God's presence and God's place of worship. This is where the commandments were read and received. The people worshiped God here. But because of their disobedience and because of several things, they were run out of the city. God allowed the enemies to teach them a lesson. But something happened in the days of Nehemiah. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah, amen, sitting in the governor's house. He was the cupbearer uh, to, the, to, the, to the king. And the Bible says he heard about the city of Jerusalem, how it was burnt with fire and the walls were torn down. Nehemiah got a burden. Nehemiah heard what had happened and he was so concerned about his city and his people. They begin to pray and call upon God and say, God, is there something we can do about this? Because this is not how the city of God should stand. Amen? This is not how the, the people of God should be living their lives scattered and, and without joy and without strength. Can I get a witness this morning? Yeah. That's not the portion of God's children this morning to be scattered and depressed and running around in fear. But our portion today, he said the heathen will be your portion. Yeah. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Yeah. The Bible says that, amen, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear that either. Why? Because we have hope in God today. We've got Jesus and we've got our Lord today. That's not our portion today to be running around afraid and scared, but to maintain the joy and the hope we have in God today. Yes. The city was broken down and Nehemiah had a vision. A vision to rebuild the walls. And the Bible says uh, they began to seek after God and began to do the work. And I don't have enough time to go through all of that. But the point I'm getting to is that the people of God stood together. They joined hand in hand. They rebuilt the walls. They began to put back and put back together the things that had been stolen by the enemies of God. And they rebuilt the walls and they rebuilt the gates uh, and they brought worship back and they brought the reading of the commandments back. Uh, and the people in response to this, they were overwhelmed with, uh, with, with, with just a fear and they began to weep uh, of all the things that were happening. And here comes Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, telling all the people, this is not a time to be sorry. This is not a time to weep. And this is not a time to be down. He said, he said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It was in this verse he said, no, it's not time. This is a holy day. You're going to eat the fat. You're going to drink the sweet. You're going to have portions for them who have nothing is prepared. Listen 
intentional and God is saying as he begins to bring hope and restoration to his people the joy of the Lord is your strength don't you be sorry don't you be sad hope thou in God is what he was saying it's that joy that gives you strength but there are some joy stealers today amen there are some joy stealers out there that want to take your joy take your happiness take away your peace and today this was one of the things that we find the fear today is a joy stealer fear is a joy stealer fear has been defined as false evidence appearing to be real and you spell it out acrostically f-e-a-r false evidence appearing real fear as the song says is a liar Yes. Israelite people were the apple of God's eye, God's chosen. And they had every reason to be glad and joyous. And one day the enemy stole their joy by using fear tactics. And the fear tactics at this particular time that was used by the Philistines was a giant by the name of Goliath. He was a warrior. Most of us know the story of Goliath today. But what happened with the Israelite people as Goliath came out and taunted the Israelites? Not just one day, not just two days, but for 40 days, Goliath came out. And he came out every day, defying the armies of the living God. He came out insulting the God of the Israelites. He came out standing insulting and hurling accusations at the God of Israel. The God of these people who were named by God. They were God's people. They were God's chosen these were the elect of God. These were the ones that if anybody should be standing up, they should have been standing up. But something happened when they allowed fear to grip their hearts. And this giant came out and struck fear in their hearts. This giant was a joy stealer for the Israelites. Because something appeared larger than it really was. False evidence appearing real. We've all faced circumstances or something in our life that appeared larger on the appearance or on the outset than it actually turned out to be. Can I get a witness? Amen. You feared the worst. You, you thought it was going to be so bad. You thought, oh no, this is going to happen. And then when it's all done and said, you, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> right? It wasn't that bad. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying everything's that way, but there's a lot of things the devil uses as a joy stealer to make it appear to be something bigger than it really is. Goliath appeared to be big in size and in stature and in strength. But what about their God that they served? Amen? What about the God that they served that delivered them and brought them out of Egypt and supplied for their every need and took care of them no matter what was going on? What about the God that was able to sustain them and help them and never failed them up to that point? When they saw Goliath, Goliath stole their joy. Really the devil. Amen? It really was the devil. The devil was behind it because he stole their joy. And what happened to their strength as a result of that? Their strength was gone. Their knees, their, their, their knees were shaken. They just, what are we going to do? They lost their joy. They lost their hope. And next thing you know, their strength is gone. Because strength and joy is connected together. Strength and joy. We need that joy because joy is what? It's, it's at a emo, more than an emotion. It's that expression of hope and assurance that we have in God. Amen. Yeah. It's not just yeah. laughing around. Ha, 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 ha. I'm not the, well, that's not what joy is. I mean, it may no. express itself at times that way. There's a joy, but the, the underlying definition of joy is having hope. Amen. Yeah. And that assurance. And when you have hope and assurance, it makes you happy. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so they lost their strength. But along comes little David, the shepherd boy, who, 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 who got involved and heard what was going on. And he wasn't concerned about the size of the Goliath. He wasn't concerned about the size of the giant. But he had one thing that he was determined to do. Not allow this Goliath and the devil to shame the God that he served. Amen. Yes. He was going to stand for God and stand for what was right. And he said, is there not a cause? Why are you afraid? And here's little David, a shepherd boy, speaking to a king and speaking to the armies. Saying, is anybody, isn't anyone going to do anything here? Hallelujah. He lived in small, but he had a big God, and he trusted the big God that he served. And he wasn't going to allow the size of the battle take away the size of the God that he served today. Yes. And it should be the same with us. He didn't allow the fear 
of Goliath to steal his joy. He went out there. And a matter of fact, the Bible says when he faced the giant, uh, he wasn't timid. He didn't uh, hesitate. Uh, but the scripture says that he ran out there in that valley towards Goliath. Why? Because he believed in God. He knew that God was in control. Uh, he said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, uh, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, and he went to running. Uh, why? Because he had joy. He was not afraid. Uh, he faced the giant. Uh, and God stood by his side, church. Yes. God will stand by your side when you stand for what's right and you stand for Amen. Him. Amen. Don't let fear be a joy stealer in your life. Amen. False evidence appearing to be real. Amen. We have not been given the spirit of fear, the Bible says. Amen? Amen. But of love and of power and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen. We don't have the spirit of fear, but this is something the enemy, the thief, uses to steal joy from unsuspecting and unguarded and unprotected people who have allowed their guard to go down. This is why the Bible tells us so many times to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues of life. You've got to keep your heart. Amen? You've got to keep your mind. You've got to keep your thoughts. You've got to keep things in check. Amen. You've got to keep things in line. You've got to keep Amen. things straight up here, right? Amen. Because where's the battlefield? Where's the battlefield, church? The battlefield isn't out there on Cleveland Avenue. It's in downtown Columbus. No Amen. Way. The battlefield isn't Minneapolis, St. Paul, or Seattle, and the Chaz Zone, or used to be. That's not the battlefield. It's not over in the oil fields of Iraq or Afghanistan. That's not the real battlefield that, that, we, that we have that's in play today. The real battlefield is right here in the mind. Yes. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. The principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. The real Amen. battle is right here. And we can win that battle, church. Amen. We can win it right there because that's where we believe. That's where we understand. And that's where we make up in our mind that God is who He said He is. And God will do what He said He will do. And God will not fail and take His word back today. Amen. What shall we do? What shall we do? We guard our heart. We guard our mind. David wasn't there for 40 days listening to the insults and allowing the fear to steal his joy. But as soon as he heard something, he acted upon it. And he made the decision. And from that, the Bible says, as the people came back, and I'm not going to get to the next part of this here. I'm going to close it right after this. I've got two more points. Maybe next week, maybe we'll continue going about joy stealers. Just pray for me as we do this, okay? But fear, what happened in our Bible setting? The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 8 that... David and the people were coming back from the battle, coming back from defeating the Philistines and Goliath. And the scripture says that when David and the people came back into the city, people got excited. Amen? Amen. They got excited. Let me get this for a prompt real quick here. All right. Tabrets, right? Yeah. Tabrets. The Bible says the ladies grabbed the tabrets, the timbrels, and they started dancing. Hallelujah. Man. They started dancing. Why? Because that's what they did. They knew how to sing. Yeah. They knew how to rejoice. And the ladies started dancing and singing songs. And they said, they, uh, Saul killed his thousands. David killed his ten thousands. Yeah. And they were singing and they were having a good time. There was joy in the camp of Israel. Joy had been restored. Amen. But the Bible says in the next verse, someone got their joy stolen that day. Uh -huh. Because Saul heard that and Saul was very wroth. Mad. He was livid. He heard them sing that song and they were singing 10,000 from David and only thousands from me. I'm the king. I'm Saul. And he got his feelings hurt. He got his pride stepped on and he got his joy stolen that day. While everyone else was happy, he should have joined right in there with him. But rather he stood back like a little baby, like a little child and got upset. And he was jealous of David until the day that he died. What a horrible way to go out. Amen. With your joy stolen, when you should have been happy with him. Amen. Hallelujah. But that's what happened. Joy was stolen. All the people happy. But Saul was very wroth. 
Because the devil, the devil got into his heart and yeah. stole the joy yeah. and stole the strength that this king had. He could have done so much for God. Saul was God's chosen one. He was the king. He could have done so much for God and the kingdom of God. But Saul didn't protect himself. And Saul didn't guard his heart. Listen, no one is exempt from, from the thief coming and trying to make an attempt on your life and your spirituality. No one is exempt. Right. Even kings have been brought down yeah. by this thief and by this devil. True. And there's more we can talk about later about King David, how even later on in his life as a king, he allowed his joy to be stolen when he sinned against God with Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about joy stealers. The people had a reason to rejoice. Today, we have a reason to rejoice. We have a reason to guard and protect and relish and take care of and remind ourselves, amen, of the hope that we have in God today. Amen. And the hope and the assurance we have in all of His promises that the Bible says are yes and amen. Today, joy steals. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But what did Jesus say? I am come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. Yes. Amen? Amen. Life more abundantly. The devil's trying to take away. God's trying to give us something today. Amen. When you, when you follow the thief's path and you, when you follow his temptation, when you follow what he's trying to do, he may promise things at first. Oh, it'll make you happy at first. Mm -hmm. It'll give you pleasure at first and mm -hmm. you'll feel good at first. But behind all of that, the underlying... The underlying motive is to bring destruction, to bring misery, to bring heartache. Yes. And it happens. But the underlying promise and the heart of God today is not to take away, but to add yes. and to give us an abundant life. There's no life outside of Jesus today, church. There's no life outside of Christ. There's no real joy outside of the Lord. What does the Bible say? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace, those first three. But joy, the fruit of the Spirit of God living in your life, He will bring about joy, the hope, the happiness, the contentment in your heart, knowing that you have assurance in Him. No matter what happens, that doesn't have to be broken. That doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be disconnected in any way. Don't let the devil steal your joy this morning. As we bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to the Lord Jesus and turn us over for prayer. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We thank you today for your goodness. We thank you today for this service. We thank you for all of your people. God, we ask that you would uh, minister. We ask that you would do a work in the hearts and the minds of your people today, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, our cup is uplifted. We need you today. We need your touch. We desire your presence. We yes. desire your help, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for your mercy. Thank you for bringing us here today to receive from your word. Have your way right now. As Lord, we turn our hearts over to you. And as we give it to you, Jesus, have your way in this service and this altar prayer. For we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. What do you need from God? Let God bless you today in the service. Let God touch you today. These altars are open for prayer. Let's all find a place to pray this morning. Allow Jesus to be your strength. Allow him today to be your joy. You